Hello everybody. Um, so as you can see up here, the tensioner spring on my garage door um, has, has broken. So today I'm gonna to do a video of uh, how I'm going to uh, replace that. Uh, just to preface this, I'm not a, an expert. Um, I don't do this for a living. Uh, well, from what I've read, it's pretty dangerous. So, um, you know, you have to be pretty careful when you're doing this. There's a lot of tension on these. Anyways, uh, you know, use your own uh, use your own judgment if you don't feel like you can do it. Um, just have somebody pay somebody to do it. But I'm gonna show you what I did and uh, the things that I'm doing to, to try to stay safe. Um, so before you get started, obviously you need to find a replacement tension spring. Um, so to do that, there's a few measurements you need. You need the overall length. So say from that end to this end, um, you need the inside diameter of this coil. And then you need the, the diameter of each one of these coils individually. So, um, you know, to, to find the, the inner diameter, basically you just use your, use your tape measure and find inner diameter of the coil. The overall length, you can measure that pretty easy. Um, so I've seen a little cheat uh, on, online to, to kind of help with the coil size. You know, if you've got a set of calipers or mics or something, you can just measure it directly. But if not, um, you can measure, count off 20 coils and basically measure, um, you know, the length of those 20 coils. So for me, it's right about at that five and a quarter mark. So um, you take five and a quarter, divide by 20, and you end up with uh, about 262 thousandths um, of an inch. So that is the diameter of the coil here. Uh, what I found in my research is, you know, these can range anywhere from 207 thousandths all the way up to maybe 295 thousandths. So the diameter of, of each of these coils. Um, and so, you know, I just want to do a direct replacement. Um, but there's charts and things out there that, that go off of the, the garage door weight, uh, the length, and then what type of uh, tensioner spring you actually need. So you could probably call a garage door company and they'd be able to tell you. But if you're just doing a direct replacement, um, that's how you measure it. Um, I also found that uh, I, I could have gone with a with a smaller diameter coil or maybe even a shorter coil. Um, the it would still lift the door. I think the big difference is how how long it will last. So <clears throat> these are rated for a certain amount of cycles based on the weight of the door. Um, and so you know you type in. There, there was one website I found where you type in the weight of the door, the length of the door, or the height, I can't remember which one, and then it'll give you all your options, and then it'll also show you like the amount of cycles. So I think I could have used like a 207 thousandths coil, um, diameter coil, but the, um, you know, the amount of cycles was rated for like 11,000, where this one is, you know, triple or quadruple that. So um, anyways, do your research on that or just, just call a garage door company and they can get you the right uh, the right size tension spring tensioner spring um, so real quick here's the uh, the kit that I ended up getting um, you can see on the the coil there or the tension spring it says 262 so that's 262 thousandths dash 2 that's a 2 inch inner diameter for the coil uh, 40 is the overall length of the coil and then you have a right hand wound and a left hand wound spring. So real quick, um, the, the tension spring on the left hand side of the door is actually a right hand wound spring. And on the right hand side of the door, it's a left hand wound spring. So you can see, I just have one, um, some garage doors will have two. So I have one, one right hand wound spring on this door. And then this door has one left hand wound spring. So anyways, that's why I ended up getting the kit because I'll probably replace the other, um, the other one as well. It'll, it'll break eventually. Um, but real quick, here are the, uh, the things that it's saying that I will need. Uh, vice grips, a few different size wrenches, a file, uh, these windings which came um, in the kit. There's two of them here. So that is to wind up um, the tension spring here. And then it came with some gloves. Uh, anyways, that's what's in the kit, and uh, I'll go ahead and get started.
Okay, so the first thing I'm doing is um, I'm loosening up these uh, these um, bolts here. Um, I'm also going to loosen up these two. And then down here on the other end, um, loosen up these uh, for that center mounting bracket. There's two of them here. Um, these down here were 9 16 uh, The paperwork was, was wrong, which doesn't surprise me, but no big deal. Um, and again, when you're loosening this, my spring was broke, so the tension was already gone. Um, but if, if, it, if your spring isn't broke, um, you'll want to use these to um, hold the tension while you loosen those up and then slowly let the tension out of the spring. Okay, so I had to loosen that pulley down there up as well. But you can see I've got it out of, the, uh, out of that center bracket. And then um, my other pulley, I pulled off this end. And so this pipe just comes right out of the end. And then I'm gonna slide, it's a little bit heavy. Um, so, you know, if you got an extra hand from somebody, it might be uh, not a bad idea. But anyways, I'm just gonna slide um, this entire t uh, torsion spring off of the end of this, uh, this bar here. Okay, so I've got the old one. Um, off got the new one right here ready to go on so one other thing that I read um, you know it mentioned having a file um, and so I think the idea is to um, file down these little indents here and then there's one here um, so that your spring and pulley kind of slide back on there without any resistance because you know there's some raised metal there so file those down and then you should be able to slide your spring and your pulley right back on Okay, so what I just did was reset the uh, uh, this little drum here. So the wire goes in that slot <coughs> and um, up, up around the top here. And then, you know, you can kind of uh, get that pulled tight. Um, and I, I went ahead and screwed these in. So I need to do the other side as well, um, the other pulley on the other side. And that way <coughs> I can make sure that the entire bar across here is pulled tight and that the drums are set up where um, there's tension on the on both cables there. And I tried to get it back in the in the same spot it was before. Um, you can see on this side it's not all the way up against the uh, this little stop here. So luckily for me I have other ones that I can look at and um, so what it was, it was about the same width as this uh, um, ratchet wrench, you know, the this, this fit, it, fit in over there. So I kind of lined it up, um, you know, the same. And then on the, uh, the bar itself, you can actually see this big uh, kind of rust spot. So that's where um, the bar was sitting on this bearing up here. So try to try to line everything back up, you know, pretty close to where it was uh, originally. So. Okay, so I've got both my pulleys tightened back up um, here and down there. Did that one first. I went ahead and put these uh, bolts back through the through the center bracket. Again, there was marks there. I tried to line them up uh, pretty much the same place they were before. So now it's time to uh, tighten up that torsion spring. Okay, so in the instructions it said to put some clamps um, right over top of the, the track wheels. So that way when you're tightening up the spring, the door doesn't try to lift up on its own. So I went ahead and put those in place, uh, one on each side, one there, and one right there, so.
Okay, so um, got it all installed, right? The torsion spring's all tightened up. Um, bolts are tightened down on the uh, on the end piece over there, so it's it's working good. Um, you know, the, the garage door goes up pretty easy. It is hitting this chain, so I can't put it all the way up just yet. But um, anyways, by far, you know, tightening this the spring up was the hardest part. Um, certainly be careful I can see why now a lot of people were warning that this could be dangerous um, trying to stay out of the way and then tighten those you know tighten those up by hand um, was, was a little bit challenging you know it's, it's uh, pretty tough to turn after you get you know 20 turns on it or so so uh, be very careful if you do it um, also make sure you do you know I read a bunch of things that said make sure you get the uh, um, these bars that are made for tightening that up highly recommend that now after seeing how much force uh, you know it kind of takes and how much force that spring has in it so um, definitely would recommend that also um, when that spring broke um, it snapped the sprocket off the top of my garage door opener so I'm gonna be replacing that with a belt drive system um, so you can check out the uh, my other video for that but anyways uh, Stay safe, be careful uh, if, if you're doing this, and uh, good luck. Thanks for watching.